Welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and discussing topical issues. And this week, we're going to take a little bit of a sports approach uh, by visiting with Lynn Draper. Yes, we're going to talk about uh, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and, of course, the Jim Thorpe Association. Lynn is the uh, boss man out there of those two uh, organizations, and they have a brand new home. We're going to be talking about that. That's right. They're getting ready to open out on North Lincoln in Oklahoma City. We'll learn more from Lynn Draper today on The Verdict. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit and a stronger dollar, green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're pleased to welcome back to The Verdict uh, a longtime friend, Lynn Draper. Lynn is the president and CEO of the Jim Thorpe Association and the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. In 1986, with Ed Sawson, why uh, Lynn uh, uh, started the uh, Jim Thorpe Association, and then uh, at the same time, uh, Mick and uh, Lynn collaborated to start the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. Lynn has received the NFL Players Association Award of Excellence for his work in this area. He's distinguished himself in service to the community and many civic and cultural activities. He received the Distinguished Service Award from the Governor, uh, Council on Physical Fitness for his uh, work in, uh, in the sports area. And he has uh, just uh, opened his new building at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, and we wanted to talk to him about that today. Lynn, welcome. Thank you. Good to be back. Glad well, to have you back. Great to have you back. And I'm so thrilled for you at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame opening up. I know you and I have shared this dream for many, many years, but you were the driving force out there that saw it to its completion. And, and I mentioned in the, in the open that it hadn't quite opened yet. We're taping this show before it opens, but this show airs. It has already opened. So tell people uh, about the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and the location and, and what people can see there. Well, it's, uh, it's a brand new uh, construction uh, new building mm -hmm. it, the building is old but the uh, we everything inside is totally new been totally revamped into a state-of-the-art world-class uh, facility to honor Oklahoma sports legends uh, it's a 40,000 square foot uh, building um, has exhibits on almost all of our Oklahoma mm -hmm. on all of our Oklahoma great uh, sports figures and it has a uh, 600 seat ballroom so it's it's a facility that we think will become a, a, a landmark of Oklahoma sports. Well, we have, a, we have a picture that we can show of, of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. This is actually an artist's rendition, but I can vouch that it looks very much like that. And there's a huge statue of Jim Thorpe right out there on Lincoln. And many of people have probably driven by and seen that and kind of uh, wondered what might be behind. But that is the site of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. And the Jim Thorpe statue is, what, nine feet tall? It's, it's, yeah, the it's bronze. heroic size, which means size and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a very striking piece of public art uh, that r I think really is, a, is a, an attribute for the community uh, beyond what goes on inside the building. That, that statue of Jim Thorpe is special. Well, Jim Thorpe was special, and he is one of the greatest icons uh, Oklahoma has got. Mm -hmm. And that statue, of course, is a replica of the Jim Thorpe Award that's given uh, 
every year to the best defensive back in college football. Yeah, the Jim Thorpe Association does a lot of things. You and your executive board uh, put on the Jim Thorpe Award, which goes nationally to the nation's cop uh, defensive back in college football. You also do a number of philanthropic type endeavors. Tell us about some of those th things that the Jim Thorpe Association is involved with. Well, we have an extensive uh, group of awards and, and uh, scholarships that are given out every year and, and the uh, Jim Thorpe uh, programs. Uh, we recently, about a year ago, took over the uh, Warren Spahn Award. It was given by the uh, Oklahoma Sports Museum in Guthrie, which has now been merged into the uh, uh, Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. So uh, we'd have an extensive youth program that reaches kids all over the state of Oklahoma, generating about uh, 50,000 drug-free pledges a year from from, high, from uh, students across the state. Uh, we do all-star games uh, uh, for high school graduating seniors uh, in both Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Um, our Bright Path Youth Program. Uh, reaches about 15,000 kids in the Oklahoma City public school system uh, with a physical fitness and, and sports uh, uh, agenda and also arts, uh, an arts fest. So mm -hmm. we cover a lot of ground in that respect. <laughs> well, I'd like to ask uh, both you guys, if you would, to talk about just how you folks came around with the idea of having an Oklahoma Sports well, Hall of Fame. You know, we kind of found each other. I, I had started the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame in the, in the mid-1980s along with some other media that I kind of got together. And so we started, you know, we really ought to have one of these. How do we do it? <clears throat> and so we, we had a nominating process, started electing that inaugural class, and started holding some banquets. And it, it, they had been okay. They had been attended fairly well in Oklahoma City and also in Tulsa. But at the same time, um, Lynn was getting this group started doing the Jim Thorpe Award, and I could see that, that Lynn's organization had the, had, the, had the structure that the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame did not, uh, based on the amount of time that I, I had to, to give to it. And so it just seemed like a perfect match that, that Lynn at some point just gradually took in the, the, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. And, and I tell you, the, the award has never looked back. I mean, the, the, the banquets got bigger and bigger and better and better, and the, at, and the athletes and coaches have been honored to a higher level than ever would have happened otherwise. But uh, from a hierarchy standpoint, the, at the, the top level is the Jim Thorpe Association, and then one of the elements of the Jim Thorpe Association is the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. That's right. Well, have you been uh, pleased with the way it's uh, developed, Lynn? The it's, Hall of Fame. Well, of course, we would like to have moved faster, but at the same time, <laughs> it's uh, uh, considering all the things that we've been doing and the people involved. It's uh, it's been a uh, something that we think has been very important to the people of Oklahoma. It's a source of pride and spirit, uh, and it, recognizing uh, the sports figures of this state uh, and people like Jim Thorpe and uh, you know Mickey Mantle, Johnny Bench. Uh, Abe Lemons, the list goes on and on and on. So well, I remember, and in fact, I think I was quoted in the Daily Oklahoma in the mid 1980s. You know, they were asking me, you know, what ultimately do you want to do? I said, well, I think we ought to have a museum. I think, you know, but you know, that may be 10 years from now. Well, it, <laughs> it, it was only uh, 25 years, uh, you know, so I, I, was, I was just a little bit off. Well, you've always been ahead of your time. Right? <laughs> But you, know, but 10 you years, were with the five ten years, at the time? Yeah, I was with Channel 5. Ten yeah. years seemed like such a distant day. You yeah. know, in 1985, <laughs> ten years sounded like that was way into, into, into the future. But <laughs> it, it took a little bit longer. But I, I, I've got to tell you that the museum that, that Lynn and his people have put together over there is an incredible uh, piece of and collection of art. And it's something that everyone should see, whether you're a sports fan or not. Uh, sports has been such a part of Oklahoma's culture and history that you, it's, it's almost difficult to separate the two. Absolutely. Sports affects everything we do in our lives. It's culturally, economically, our language, everything about it. It's, uh, it's a huge part of, every, of, of Oklahoma culture and, and of, of the people of Oklahoma. So it's, we think it's very important for the, for the state of Oklahoma. Now, you said something, excuse me for interrupting, you said something that kind of caught my ear, uh, that not only does the Sports Hall of Fame building uh, have the uh, memorabilia, but you have a dining facility or a convention room or whatever you said. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that something that's available to the public to rent? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's, so many museums across the country start up and without any base for, of support. And that was one of the things we felt was important. And one of the reasons it took so long to build it was building that base of support so the thing we could you know, uh, be feasible economically. One of the factors was a 600 seat ballroom or banquet room uh, that we could lease out and of course as a source of income to help 
help pay the costs. Mm -hmm. No, it, I think it's a brilliant part of the business model because it's tough for museums to make it, you know, with that huge subsidies. And the idea that they, they, they've created this banquet hall where, you know how many high school associations and collegiate associations are holding banquets. Well, what better place to hold your group's annual event than at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of mm -hmm. Fame? And, um, and I, I've attended events there already and is very impressed with the manner and the way that it, that it was structured. And the idea that you can also visit the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame before or after your event just makes it a, a, a great decision. So you guys were very, uh, very foresightful in, in putting that together. Why don't we go ahead and, and go ahead and get us to our first break. We're, we're wrapping up our first segment here. We're talking about the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and the Jim Thorpe Association. Our guest today is Lynn Draper. And uh, Lynn Draper just recently opened the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. We're going to hear more about it and hear some personal stories about some of the inductees when we return on the verdict. I'm Beulah Shavney, and I'm an original member of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, and I'm Chickasaw. I worked at the Phoenix Indian Hospital for a year, and then there was the war. I felt like it was my duty I wanted in the Army. So I made it, got in. And it was a good feeling to put that uniform on. We were one of a kind that started something and uh, finished it. To see these women go in today, they are really doing a great job. And I'm very proud to look back now and see that I was one of the first ones of the Army that went in. There is just something it stands out about Chickasaw women. They want to go as far as they can go and succeed. I've got to do my best because I'm Chickasaw. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. We are back on The Verdict. We're visiting with Lynn Draper. He's the executive director of the Jim Thorpe Association. Just recently opened up the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame out on North Lincoln. Let's talk about some individual um, uh, conversations and memories you have as some of these inductees. Who, who jumps out at, at you? Oh, there's so many that do, but I probably some of the special ones that were very close to, to, to and such a big part of, the, of creating this thing was guys like um, uh, Allie Reynolds, Abe Lemon, so Steve Owens, so, and of course I, there was so, so many great sports figures from this state. That, uh, and most, and so it's been been a real pleasure dealing with them. Abe and Allie are not with us. Steve is uh, still a, an active part of our community, and I know we have some uh, some memorabilia that you brought in that w belonged to Allie Reynolds. Let's take a look at that now. Uh, Casey Stengel was was Allie Reynolds' uh, manager for uh, his years in, with the New York Yankees. And um, Allie um, was one of Casey's favorites, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the pieces that was Allie's, one of Allie's favorite things mm -hmm. that he had on the display was the um, um, a framed uh, piece put together by his wife before she died mm -hmm. that included Casey's all-star team. And, of course, Allie was right at the top of that list. That's right. Allie, Allie mm -hmm. was, uh, Casey picked his favorite Yankee All-Star team. You can imagine mm -hmm. the opportunity he had to choose other people. And his right-handed pitcher was Allie Reynolds. Then in the upper left there, you see some World Series tickets from Allie's five consecutive world champions that he played on with the New York Yankees and then some other memorabilia there. And we have another picture that I think really shows the, uh, the um, um, 
Oh, the relationship between the manager and, uh, and the guy he loved handing the ball to, and that's Casey Stengel there. So there you have Allie Reynolds, um, one of the key figures in those Yankee dynasty years from 1949 through 1953, and, and, uh, and the old professor, um, Casey Stengel. Well, I, I take it, Lynn, that uh, not only was Allie instrumental in uh, helping you with the Hall of Fame, but then after his death, his family, uh, his uh, children were helpful in getting memorabilia to you. Yes, uh -huh. and um, you've got quite a collection, I suspect. Yeah, we I, have. A well, reminds me, we got this bat here. Here, I'll just kind of hold it up. Uh, this was a bat, though, that that, that Allie has donated to the Hall of Fame. Yes, uh, it's it's representative of his World Series, uh, 1950 World Series bat that uh, was given to the pitchers uh, in that series. So, mm -hmm. uh, this is one that he had in, in, in among his memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So, so we're real happy to have that one. They expected pitchers to hit back then, didn't they? Every now and then. <laughs> I suspect he did uh, hit every now and then. Um, um, you've also got a Heisman Trophy on display. Yes, uh -huh. Steve Owens has put his Heisman Trophy over for uh, for our uh, to include it in our, Heis our our exhibit on the Heisman mm -hmm. Trophy winners, and that includes, of course, all the Heisman Trophy winners from Oklahoma. And there aren't that many of those on display for the public to see. There, there's two made every year. The athlete gets one. The school gets one. Well, the schools have it at the schools. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about all across the country, the Sports Hall of Fames, I doubt if very many have been able to obtain or borrow um, a, a Heisman Trophy. And for Steve to do that is, is I think, a, I think it really shows his support for the organization, but then he knows you guys are going to take care of it. Well, of course, Steve Owens is special anyway. He's one of the, again, another one of the icons of Oklahoma sports. And uh, the things that he does for this state are, mm -hmm. uh, are phenomenal, not always recognized, but uh, he, is, he loves Oklahoma and is a big part of what we do. He's very quietly effective, isn't he? Absolutely. You know, one of the things I enjoy about our state's sports history is the diversity. Um, and I, I remember with, with fondness, Jim Shoulders being, being inducted. And, and, and when I talk about diversity in this sense, I'm talking about the, the diversity of the, the different types of sports that are represented. Um, you have Bart Connor representing the sport of gymnastics, Sean O'Grady, the you know, world champion boxer. And, and, uh, and, and I think the, the, the selection committee has done a wonderful job of making sure that every sport got due representation and due acknowledgement when it came time to vote. But, you know, sometimes it's really hard to, 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 to try and judge a, a football player with a basketball player or, or, yeah. or, or, or some other sport. And, and I think overall, when you look at that list of, of people that have been inducted, I think they've done a really, really good job. And I think when people visit the museum, they'll be able to see a lot of their sports heroes. Does, well, the, uh, does the Hall of Fame have any uh, set quotas or number of people they like to try to induct every year or every other year? Well, when, the, when Mick and the media people set up the original rules, they put in uh, uh, guidelines that require the base that induction in the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame is based on uh, sports and their identification with the state of Oklahoma. And they allow no more than two inductees from uh, any one school and no more than two from any one sport per year. Per, per, year. per year. So that kind of that kind of helps spread the uh, spread it out. Uh, for example, Oklahoma uh, University of Oklahoma football is a dominant in this state. Uh, has been in the past. So so many of our inductees are, and re, and uh, candidates for induction are OU football players. So if we can only take in two of those. Then that opens the door for others on, mm -hmm. for the, to get the Oklahoma State people in and so forth. So, well, you think get overloaded. Uh, tell us uh, a few of the other individuals besides the ones you've named that are active today on your board or in uh, in uh, the community, working on behalf of the Sports Hall of Fame. People that work with you on a daily basis and are helpful. Well, Steve Owens, of course, is is right at the top of that list. Uh, Mark Connor has been helpful. Sean O'Grady is always there for almost every event that we do. Um, Bob Fina Moore, uh, uh, John Smith. Uh, I mean, you start looking down that list, it just goes. <laughs> Why about the media? Are they helpful? Uh, well, we couldn't do it without the media. Again, part of what we did with the Jim, when we started the Jim Thorpe Award, was create something that would bring pride and spirit to the state of Oklahoma. Unless you can reach out to those people, you can, they can't accomplish that. And the only way to reach out is through the media. So without the cooperation of, of what I consider one of the greatest sports media in the, in the country, and I travel the country quite a bit as part of this, and uh, the Oklahoma sports media, as far as I'm concerned, ranks right at the very top. Well, yeah, and, and Lynn mentioned a lot of people. J.W. Mashburn is, is, is very much involved. Uh, 
Uh, Eddie Sutton, you know, comes back Eddie. time and time again. Barry Switzer has, has been very supportive. You know, and you know, we, we think of those guys as, as sports legends. They're fans too. You know, and yeah. and you know, they like coming back and sharing stories. You know, and and they have a lot of mutual friends with with uh, you know with with a lot of with each other. Well, let's go back to the media just a minute. We air not only in Oklahoma City but also in Tulsa. Who in the Tulsa media sports? arena has been particularly helpful to you? Oh, uh, one guy is J.B. Haney and another is that uh, uh, John Holcomb. Um, Al Jerkins. Al Jerkins yeah. has been very supportive. Uh, of course, and Bill Connors was, was supportive, you know, with the Tulsa world for many years. Bill mm -hmm. has, has passed on, but, but uh, you know, it, it, Bill, uh, Bill acknowledging that the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame was, was important and, and uh, I, I think gave us a, a, a big leg to stand on back in the 1980s and 1990s when, when uh, he was more of a, of a presence in the world. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you've, of course, got a lot of memorabilia from great athletes here in Oklahoma, but how do you go about acquiring that? Do you seek them out and ask for uh, donations? Uh, do they seek you out, or is it a combination? Well, it's, com uh, it's a little bit of a combination, but basically, for the most part, we, uh, we have to ask and uh, let them know that, that the, the people are going to be given, our, our sports figures, know that, we're gonna, that this, their memorabilia is going to be protected it's going to be safe. It's kept in a, in, a, in a kind of environment that is healthy for that, and it's going to be there from now on. And it's there not only for for them to view and their families to view, but also for the entire state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. How many different athletes uh, uh, have been inducted so far? 122, 122 have been inducted into the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. Now, what kind of visitation do you envision uh, on an annual basis for the uh, Hall of Fame? How many visitors do you expect to, that you'd hope to get? Well, we have, have an advantage in having the uh, banquet room. That is going to bring a lot of people yeah. in. Another advantage that we have is, is all the uh, youth programs that we do because we now we can use that banquet room as a place, as a center for those youth programs. So that's going to bring many more kids. Then we will also, as most museums try to do, uh, generate traffic by, by bringing kids in from all on field trips. So if you look at that, all those aspects, if you add all that together, we can look at, at uh, attendance in the hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. And uh, the location again and, uh, and the cost of admission? The uh, location is, is in the Capitol Beautification Area just north of the State Capitol Building on North Lincoln. And there is a, admission is going to be about five dollars for adults and then of course children for free. Look on the east side of the street for the big statue of Jim Thorpe and, uh, and you can't miss it. Lynn, right. thank you for your many years of service and uh, for getting the, the Jim Thorpe Association and the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame on such a great start. Well, appreciate all the help you've been. It hadn't been a one-man show. It's taken a lot of people who are doing a lot of work. Well, yeah, but I don't think it yeah. could have been done without you. Absolutely not. Uh, you, Lynn's right. He has a great executive directors and, and a lot of uh, board help. But uh, Lynn Draper's been the driving force now for some 25 years of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. And congratulations on getting the museum open. Kent, I'll have a final word right after this. Thanks, Lynn. It's time to meet the new people in power. The people responsible for our energy future. It's you. It's me. All of us together. From now on, we're, we're the, the people, people in power. power. og will supply the power. It's how we apply the power that counts. We've got to use electricity smarter. Wiser. Cleaner. Better. So we've got to be informed, equipped, prepared. Committed. From now on. Look, nobody wants to waste energy. Nobody wants to build new power plants. Nobody wants to pay more for electricity. But nobody wants to give up their way of life. We don't have to. If we just use positive energy together. I'll take advantage of off-peak hours. That means cutting energy use from 1 to 7 every day. Every day. I'm going to sign up for more and more wind power. We'll take advantage of the high-tech tools coming soon from OG&E. OG&E can't do it alone. It's you and OG&E working together. Find dozens of ways you can help at OGE.com. A positive energy future is in our power together.
growth comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. We are back to wrap up the show on the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. Our guest today was Lynn Draper, and the Hall of Fame is now open out on North Lincoln. Well, indeed, and uh, <clears throat> Lynn is the type of guy that if he takes on a task, he gets it done, and he just doesn't quit till he does get it done. And that kind of perseverance has brought the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame uh, to, to where it is, and the uh, Jim Thorpe Association to such prominence. Over 120 Oklahomans have been inducted in the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. They are honored in their own way at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and Museum and invite people from all over the state to come to Oklahoma City and see it. Uh, and that, that nine-foot statue of Jim Thorpe out front is, is something to see all by itself. We have website information for you that will give you more information about the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. There it is, jimthorpeassociation.org. And, of course, you can go to our website, theverdict.tv. Tell us about a show you'd like to see. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.